Thanks, everyone, for uh, coming along. Um, I, as mentioned, I'm Ian Hansel. I'm from Verge Labs. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about Deckard, which is a package for visualizing you know, lots of data using DeckGL. So, So I'm one of the co-founders of Verge Labs. I've got my two other co-founders here, Tim and Anthony, if you want to give them a wave. So it's actually Anthony's birthday today. So let's all sing happy birthday to him. No, I'm kidding. We won't do that. <laughs> all right. So um, basically, the idea with Verge Labs, we wanted to you know, form a company to do interesting things in machine learning. We're based down in Sydney. So basically, the main concepts with what we're doing is there we're providing easy to implement software, um, kind of like the Electron <laughs> first talk we saw. We're bridging the gap between business and cutting edge research um, and focusing on techniques we think are going to be a big deal in the next one to two years. One of those things we think is going to be a big deal is actually using spatial data. So I think in academic research, you know, people are very familiar with um, spatial data, but what we've seen in industry is they're really not utilizing it as they should be. And there's some um, you know, great freely available data sets out there that you can use, but there's also some great tools as well that are freely available. In this talk, I'm going to go a bit of a background around some of the tool sets we've combined together um, with R, why you should use Deckard, some examples, uh, what we're going to be working on over the next few months with Deckard to make it, you know, a bit more usable, and any questions at the end. So, first off, who's heard of DeckGL before? Just a quick show of hands. A couple of people. Cool. All right, great. So DeckGL um, is a web 2.0 data visualization framework released by Uber. It was open sourced around November 2016. <clears throat> One of the really cool things that's happened over the last uh, you know, few months is there's a pure JavaScript API. So prior to this, um, you know, we, we were using it. It was you know, in React framework, and it was kind of hard to use and really difficult to connect with R. But now, there's a pure JavaScript API. It plays pretty nicely with HTML widgets and Shiny and things like that. Um, there's also Mapbox GL integration. So we'll talk a little bit about Mapbox, but in more in particular, vector tiles in a little bit later on, and how that differs from Leaflet and the tile sets you might have seen there. Um, and basically, the, the reason you can visualize so much data is there's instancing and layering. So instancing is we're taking copies of data and modifying it. Layering, layering data is overlaying different data sets and aggregating them. So we can visualize lots of data on the fly. OK, so one of the things that's really different from Leaflet and something like Mapbox, or uh, there's a few other sort of uh, providers, these vector tile sets. Uh, has anyone used Mapbox or something similar to like that for? A couple of people? All right, great. So hands up, who's used Leaflet? <laughs> OK, everyone's used Leaflet. Great. So you know what I'm talking about with Leaflet. Um, the data sets that you, well, the tiles that you get back, they're pre-rastered images, right? So the geographic information is already encoded in pixels, and you get those tile sets back. What's different with vector tile sets is that information is stored in polygons, points, lines, and then it's rendered in the browser uh, as it's received. So the reasons that you might want to do that is it's, uh, it's a lot faster to transfer the data, but then you can also query the actual uh, tile sets and, and get you know, more interactions through that. So that's one of the differences between Leaflet and what we're using here with Mapbox or vector tiles, basically. OK, so what are some of the reasons you might want to use Deckard? So sort of mentioned before, large-scale data visualization. It can render lots of points on the fly because it's using WebGL. Um, WebGL is basically just using a GPU or CPU for rendering lots of data rather than <coughs> just uh, you know, the static sort of images you might see. Uh, it's rendering it in the browser, so you know, the whole idea with Shiny, being able to share your applications to people without having specialized <coughs> software is a really cool thing. Um, so you can share some of these you know, really large data visualizations. They don't have to install any software. They're going to be able to use it themselves, provided they have a decent GPU on their machine. Uh, vector tiles instead of raster tiles. So we already kind of touched on that before, but that's another reason. So all the stuff in Deckard is using vector tiles. 
And also, uh, finally, it's extendable beyond geospatial data. So, you know, you might be able to use something like 3JS or Plotly for some large-scale visualizations, and they will use WebGL as well. But I think uh, some of the things within DeckGL make it a lot easier to construct, you know, really nice visualizations and a bit more freedom. So some of the layers that you get from basically out of the box with DeckGL, uh, <clears throat> you've got lines, you've got points, you've got icons, you've got polygons, you've got screens, arcs, hexagon binning, um, and then also like just that customized layer. So again, it doesn't just have to be uh, geospatial data, it can be anything. So <clears throat> what you can kind of see is like we've got a nice building block to go build some really interesting visualizations, whether or not they're geospatial, um, th these are kind of all the things we can work with to construct some really cool visualizations. Okay, so now the exciting part, we'll switch to a live demo and just hope that it works. All right, so we'll load in the library, see if we need anything else. <clears throat> and the first data set we're gonna be visualizing is just one from um, the US census data. So we're visualizing the population within Manhattan. So we can just read that in as a CSV, construct a color palette as we would with something like Leaflet, uh, and then render a points layer. So hopefully, like if you've used Leaflet before, this is kind of looking a little bit familiar. Um, the idea was to keep it sort of similar to Leaflet, um, and then you know we'll extend it later on. Cool. So we've got a few thousand, thirteen thousand points. Visualize. We'll make that bigger. Right. All right. So you know we've got you know a fair bit of data here. It's pretty easy. Very responsive moving around, we can zoom right in. Um, and also you'll notice that, you know, because we're using things like SVG and Canvas, uh, the resolution is, is really nice even when we go all the way in. So sometimes, I don't know if you've zoomed in on some of the tile sets from Leaflet, they can look a little bit pixelated. Um, the, you don't really get that with uh, MapZen or the Mapbox. Um, and then you can also start doing some interesting things like moving the plane around. So. This is kind of starting to touch on this idea that you can change the actual view and we're kind of, we're getting this uh, two and a half dimensions or three dimensions we can get to as well. But we can, you know, do more things because we're not, we don't have raster tiles, right? We've got vector tiles that can be queried, manipulated and, and transformed. All right, next up uh, is just a property data set it's from Vancouver. <coughs> so in this case, we're gonna read in a GeoJSON file we're going to I'll scroll across. So store that in <clears throat> sorry, store that in SP format. And then again have a color palette. We're gonna have the color palette based on uh, property prices. And then we're gonna <clears throat> render that the, the polygons of the boundaries of these different neighborhoods. We're gonna color them by the, the value and we're gonna put the height uh, as as the growth, so the actual growth in the property prices over the past few years. So we do that, and we start to sort of see, like we've got some really nice interactive visualizations here, we can do a lot with it, um, you know, really, <clears throat> sorry, really explore like a lot of data at once, um, hopefully kind of getting you thinking about what sort of things you can do with this. Um, you know, we've got, you know, nice maps, we've got, you know, ability to render lots and lots of information now. Um, and it's, you know, using some things that hopefully you're already familiar with, like SP, GeoJSON, CSVs. Um, <clears throat> we've got a nice responsive, yeah, interactive map. <clears throat> yep. The map style, yeah. So that's using, so, <clears throat> good point. When you're using Leaflet, you've got OpenStreetMaps, and that's the <clears throat> their tile service. This one is using 
free tile mapper, or you can also use Mapbox, which is a similar thing, but you actually need an API key for that. So that's the um, OpenStreetMap doesn't have a vector tile service, and I think they, they might be going to it a little bit later on, but they don't have it right now. The base tiles in this are from a different service, um, Mapbox or free tile tiler or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's just in the, sort of the options, yeah. Yeah, so I'm choosing the map style, yeah, but the base layer, you're right. Cool. Okay, so the demo worked. I didn't have to resort to the still screenshots, which is nice. Um, so comparing that to Leaflet, so one of the interesting things is um, Vladimir Agovkin, who was the creator of Leaflet, he did AMA uh, a few weeks ago, actually, and you know, he's talking about some of the things he's working on. He's now working at Mapbox. And he's talking about you know next generation map technology, vector maps, which is what we just saw, and in particular performance, data visualization, and computational geometry algorithms. And that is basically all of that WebGL, um, DeckGL, Mapbox GL type stuff that we just saw before. So it's really interesting that you know the guy that made Leaflet is now working on this sort of stuff and. You know, I don't think DeckArt is anywhere near being able to replace Leaflet, but I think this is, you know, kind of part of the future of how you might start displaying maps and, you know, large-scale information, potentially from the one sort of interface. Um, <clears throat> and another comparison, which is, you know, you might have used 3JS. 3JS is great, but once, once you start sort of going beyond the, the simple uh, functions provided, it gets very difficult to use very quickly, I've, I've found. Um, it, it gets pretty low level, uh, even though it is meant to be simplifying this WebGL stuff, it, it can still be pretty tricky to work with. Um, but you can do some really interesting things with it as well. All right, so what are we going to be working on? What's the future state of Deckard look like? Uh, more custom layers in the package. There's a lot more stuff we can do. We can, we can build into it um, and extend that, extend that out. Non-geospatial data. So basically making really nice graphs, not just of geospatial data, but any type of data. Videos and animations, so we kind of touched on before that you actually have the ability to change the viewport, change the camera settings and things like that, which lends itself to be able to you know, construct videos and animations. Integration with other VizGL frameworks, so there's some other nice frameworks that Uber's provided that play well with DeckGL, like React Viz, um, and then that's kind of really just combining uh, you know, that sort of cross-functionality, like cr uh, cross-talk and things like that, if you've seen that in Shiny. <clears throat> and another idea we've been playing around with uh, that can kind of work well is server-side rendering. So if you don't have a great GPU on your laptop, potentially using an, a box with a good a GPU on AWS and just streaming the video to, your, to a low-powered device. Okay, that's it. Thank you uh, for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you want to use Deckard a little bit later on. Um, and thanks for the organizers. I've, you know, we've enjoyed the conference. You've seen our logo probably splashed on the bags, but you know, it's, it's been great to be able to sponsor an event like this, and you know, we're really stoked to be here. So thanks. Any questions?